What's going on, all you wild and decrepit rascals out there? It's your two favorite M. Night Shalom Hominin. Shalom. Enthusiast back here for Sunfellas. I'm Logan Myers. It's my good mate over there. And I am Henry Hill. And we are back again, Logan. And what are we talking about tonight? We're talking about M. Night Shyamalan's new film, Old, which is based on a book uh, from a writer whose name is Pierre Oscar Levy and Frederick Peters. They wrote this book uh, back in the early 2000s called Sandcastle. So this film, Old, M. Night Shyamalan comes in. We're used to seeing M. Night Shyamalan write his own movies and this time he's actually adapting this from the book so that's yeah. different than what we usually see and the result is a film that's a little different from his uh, other films but but it you know it includes the twist at the end too although this one was very predictable for me <laughs> yeah that's pretty much what i'm thinking uh but this time around with m night he's going about it in a tropical location which we haven't seen before usually it's in pennsylvania or the east coast kind of darker this movie's very bright, sunny. It's on this paradise. Uh, basically, this family of four, they end up going on this like getaway vacation, end up on this resort and island. Um, and they meet all these, you know, different characters that are also on vacation cops, you know, therapists, psychologists, you know, just random people there on vacation. They go to this remote part of the island um, they're taken to and weird things start happening. And that's pretty much the setup of the film. Ooh, a creepy island. We've never heard that set up before in numerous TV and film projects. <laughs> right. But yet yet again, here we are. Uh, we follow this family, like you mentioned, and their two kids. And we we quickly learn that there's some crazy stuff going on, on this island. Uh, and in the beginning scene, they're getting they go to the resort, obviously, and meet the hotel staff. They're greeted real nicely. It looks like a real five-star resort they're going to take them over to this secluded part of the island for the day to have their own private beach along with some other some other uh, tourists that are visiting the same hotel and uh, M. Night Shyamalan makes a uh, you know his cameo in the film as the driver of the van that's taking them over to this secluded island uh, they pull up to this gate and it says you know tr no trust no trespassers you can't go past this he opens it up and he's real quick to get the, the families off the van. He tells them he's got to get back real quick. Here's a big uh, basket full of food for your kids and stuff for the day. It's gigantic. There's all this food in there. He's like, oh, no, you know, kids get hungry. You guys go ahead and take it. Little than they know, it's all rationed out. You got full meals in here and stuff. And it's part of the twist of this movie. <laughs> uh, so he, he gets them on the island, then he locks up the gate and gets out of there. And uh, quickly, they uh, go on this island, and they, they see this rapper here. One of the kids notices him with one of the cheesiest rap names I've ever heard, but probably something not too far from reality nowadays. And his name is Two Door Sedan. <laughs> not Two Door Sedan. Cinema Club? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking, too. So, yeah, they see this rapper, and his nose is bleeding for some reason. We don't know why. And shortly after that, the kids are swimming and the kids in the water and a body comes up behind them. And we, we learn that it's two door sedans girlfriend that he came there with and she just died. So that sort of sets everything up and all the bad things that happen on the island begin after that. Yeah. And they start introducing more of the characters, you know, obviously the, the parents, the married couple that are actually kind of going through a separation through a divorce. So they're going on this getaway with their family. Um, to kind of keep their mind off of that and enjoy some away time, I guess, maybe try to save their marriage, but they really don't get along. Uh, we have Guy that's played by Gail Garcia Bernal and Prisa played by Vicky Creeps. And I didn't really think they had any chemistry in this movie <laughs> playing the parents. <laughs> uh, but the two young kids are pretty convincing. And that's when you start seeing weird things happen, being on this uh, remote part of this island. They start aging. Uh, the young boy is like six years old. The girl's 11. And then within a short amount of time, he's like 11 and she's like 17. You know, they get older, basically. And they're trying to figure out what exactly is going on here. And they need to get off of this part of the island. And of course, it doesn't work out very well for them. They can't get out of this part. And uh, you're seeing other characters such as like this doctor, his wife, the trophy wife, you know, young daughter. Um, you have another nurse. Uh, I can't think of the actor's name, but he's been a bunch of things like Lost, I believe. He was in the x yeah. movies. Can't think of his name. Uh, but he plays like a nurse, his wife, there's a lady that has seizures and all different characters, but they're all trying to figure out what, ex what exactly is going on. It's really affecting the younger kids more as they age. It's an interesting enough premise with the aging and how everything weird is happening on the island. It just isn't executed well enough, uh, I didn't think. You know, it's 
and Night Shyamalan, you know, he, we're, we know him from all his twist endings, but this he's taken from the book. He adapted a screenplay from it, but uh, just the characters and what they do, you know, you're, you're wondering why the characters are doing what they're doing. Like right away when they get there and they discover the body and they know it's this rapper's girlfriend and his nose is bleeding. Like, yeah. obviously you'd consider maybe he killed her. So you'd probably want to keep your kids away from him. You probably want to keep your distance, but everybody's all staying close and working together. No suspicions arise from that. So you get those moments in the movie that you're like, okay, I would be staying away from those people. We don't know what happened on this island. This guy just could have killed his girlfriend. You know, he has a bloody nose. Maybe she hit him in the face, which they mentioned during the film. But everybody's willing to suspend their belief to try to get off this island. So obviously it has moments like that that, uh, you know, take away take away from the movie for me. Um, as you get deeper into the story, you kind of see what's going on. They made a mention in the beginning, like some ph pharmaceutical involvement. So that's where my mind was going. And, uh, you know, by the time the end came around and we discovered the twist, it wasn't that big of a surprise. Um, but the, it was pretty interesting how every like half hour or years added years to people's lives. So yeah. eventually by the end of the movie, you know, you have the, the kids that you started with that were six and like 11, they're rapidly aging. They're approaching their probably 60s, I'd assume. Um, and they need to find a way off or else they're going to be dying within a mere couple hours, you know. So they have to discover the secret in order to get off the island. Um, maybe they do, maybe they don't. But uh, that's pretty much the film there. You know, you have people with people with a bunch of medical issues, things happening. And then in the end, you find out what's going on. And uh, all the time that they're on the island, they see this shiny thing up on a mountaintop. I kind of see it flashing. So eventually you learn what's going on there what it is in the beginning i thought maybe something religious was going on like something sort of cultish or yeah. something shaman maybe some magical powers something happening on an island like we saw with lost but it's not exactly that but uh, we won't we won't ruin the this the twist here but uh it's pretty predictable you'll see where it's going about halfway in the film if you haven't had it figured out then then uh you know maybe you'll enjoy this movie more than we did yeah i would definitely have to say it's not one of my favorite M. Night movies and uh, you know lately he's been having a great career putting out some good stuff um, this movie just didn't work for me maybe because he didn't write the script it was you know based off a, a novel um, I just th think a lot of the characters they weren't really well drawn out you didn't really get attached to them you didn't care about them because there's so so many characters on this island and they're trying to get you know the camera on each of them it just didn't work for me and I didn't really care for most of the performances minus the kids I thought they were pretty good and uh, the thing with the rapper as well didn't make sense to me. <laughs> and like the parents not really thinking things through and like they're in La La Land. And a lot of this movie has to do with time and obviously age and living in the now and not looking in the past or the future, as they say in the movie. Uh, a lot of great themes in this movie. A lot of the great shots too. A lot of the camera work in this movie is pretty good. A lot of wide shots of the beach and you have like up close to the actor uh, trying to create this, you know, layer of suspense that worked sometimes in the movies and especially in the cave scenes too. Those are some pretty good suspenseful scenes. Um, the camera work was definitely good. Directing was okay. Uh, but I think the the biggest lackluster part of this movie is probably the script and how the characters are written and, and why the movie really didn't work for me. Yeah, the cinematography <clears throat> was the high point of the film for sure. Beautiful part uh, of the island that they shot on here. I believe it was in the Dominican Republic where they shot this. Um, and it happened, you know, around the COVID times. So this movie was pushed back. It was supposed to come out, I believe, last year uh, sometime, but they pushed it back, obviously, to so people could get back in the theaters. Um, yeah, with that, with that being said, the cinematography was a high point. The kid actors, uh, but yeah, just just the things that the characters were doing and the story. The story was kind of all over the place, trying to follow too many people at once. It should have focused on the one group, but I guess the book probably did a better job fleshing out all the characters and going more in depth into things. But just like the plot, everything, the time was moving too fast. This one, the movie was uh, had a lot to do, had, you know, obviously years to cover in a short amount of time. So it just wasn't that effective for me. It wasn't one of my favorite M. Night Shyamalan movies either. He's he's done some good ones, but uh, yeah, lately, but this one wasn't uh, wasn't very good and it didn't perform very well at the box office from what I saw either. So that's a bummer, but uh, M. Night Shyamalan, he's got more projects in the works, obviously, and he still has Servant on Apple. So he'll be back hopefully with another original screenplay that he wrote 
Uh, I really enjoyed the visit it was probably my favorite one favorite movie of his as of late that was a few years back but uh he's he's still capable he's still a good director this one was just kind of a swing and a miss for him yep just didn't really work for me like you were saying a lot of predictability in this especially with the twist i pretty much called it early on nothing really um unique about this film or really anything that stands out to me it was similar to a lot of films it reminded me much of leo dicaprio's movie the beach and then also island of dr moreau uh, there were some redeeming qualities with this film, really, really great shots, wide shots, and then up close some of the actors, uh, you know, cinematography was pretty good and the score was good. Beautiful place, a place I would probably want to visit, even though the story and what happens to these people. Um, but a lot of it had to do with the characters, lack of character development, not really getting attached to any of them and definitely one of the weaker entries in the M. Night filmography. So that being said, I'm going to give his newest film, Old, a two and a half out of five. M. Night Shyamalan, Muhammad, M. And I'm a hair pieces. And I'm going to give old, also a two and a half out of five, melatonin hair pieces. If you guys are out there watching this and wondering if you should go see this in the theater, I would say no. I think this is more of a movie you could rent or check it out when it's on a streaming service. Uh, there's better movies out in the theater right now. And I think this is a better stay at home and watch with some popcorn, you know. And don't waste your money on this. This one was definitely better geared and better suited towards a streaming service. They should have released this on a streamer. Amazon. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know why they chose to put it in the theaters. It's not one that you really need to see in the theater. The cinematography is beautiful. But yeah, this one was something you could definitely watch at home. So go ahead and wait till this hits video on demand. It'll end up on one of the streamers eventually. So don't go rush out to see it. I'd say, I'd say go ahead and watch it. I mean, it's an interesting premise, at least. You know, they just didn't execute it to the fullest. We're interested in hearing from you guys. What's your favorite M. Night Shyamalan Hominin movie? Let us know in the comments below. And also, if you guys have seen this movie old, let us know what you think below and what you think of that twist at the end. Would you like to take part in the twist ending? Would you like to get... Would you like to go to this wonderful island and age, like, five years every half hour? I mean... Would you trade that for how we've been living here in COVID times, being cooped up in the house? Or would you rather go to this island and age quickly but live in paradise? And with all the freshest of fruits as well. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe below. Hit subscribe. Follow along with these wild cinephiles boys. We like to get wild and review a lot of films and TV shows. And we want you guys to follow along with us. So, Uncle Logan, before you get too old, you better go to nighttime. You got to, you need your beauty sleep. It's time to go to bed. I put on a face mask <laughs> with the cucumbers. <laughs> Until the next Cinefellas Review, I'm Henry Hill, and that's my good mate over there. Gael Garcia Myers. That's just the fruits here at Cinefellas. Cheers. Cheers. You old rascals. <laughs> <laughs>